Terrence, congratulations on this. You did an extraordinary role. I, I mean, my goodness, the whole script, I don't even know what your initial reaction as a dad was when you read this. I mean, your initial reaction is you just, you cry. You know, the moment that they come up missing, you know, it's every human being's worst fear. Anyone, the fear of loss is what breeds the greatest contempt and anger and the biggest problems in humanity. You know, most of our psychological issues come from that and we always live right on the fringe of what happens if this happens, what happens dealing with that pain body that is there to seemingly protect us, but um, it doesn't allow us to enjoy the moment as much as we can. Where do you go as an actor to internalize a role like this? Because you see Hugh Jackman's role and he's the one who's like, you know, he's got to deal with it. You have to internalize it a little bit. You know, we see your grief, no question. That's got to be so tough. Yeah, well, you have the responsibility. We all have our Cro-Magnum, you know, genetic links, and we all have our spiritual, you know, um, pineal glands that, that are seeking that conscious state of love and cooperation, you know, but we still have to eat. Mm -hmm. We still have to suffer through the things that humanity suffers through, but we have a choice to make at the end of the day. You know, are we going to just be a base low frequency or are we going to be a higher frequency recognizing that even the people that may have done the kidnapping, there's a pain that they are expressing and perhaps this is where compassion, you know, needs to be shown, that godlike quality. Yeah, uh, extraordinary cast. My God, you work with so many great people in this film. But what was it like to, uh, you know, just work with someone like Hugh Jackman and watch him in a role like this? I mean, Hugh, I've been the biggest fan of his since um, Kate and Leopold. Yeah, I love, I love uh, the X-Men and all of those things. Uh, I loved him in um, the musical, mm -hmm. you know, because I never saw that side of him. But I had never seen this rageful, you know, recompensing human being. Uh, you know, the pain of, and responsibility. He makes a statement in this movie, you know, every day I have to answer to myself that my daughter is wondering why I haven't come to save her, to rescue her. I mean, to see him take those, those steps and then to try and con convince me that he's doing the right thing, you know, that's a hard place to go. And I, I worried for him because I knew he had to actually uh, address that in his own spirit as, you know, you can't take yourself out of it. You have to consider what happens if this happened to my child. Yeah, I wanted to ask you about working with uh, great director Denis. Uh, my God, you know, the movies he's given us, just a couple of Canadian films, and look what he brings us here. Whoa, why was he the right guy to direct this? Because he's genius, because he has an emotional empathy you know, he doesn't sympathize with the characters. He's, he's such an integral, intricate part of everything taking place. His entire spirit is woven into these characters. I mean, the conversations that him and Roger Dinkins had, the um, DP, that lit this so well. I mean, they would spend hours working on every single moment, and Denis, Denis cared about us. He cared about what we were ultimately trying to accomplish, and he listened to our sensibilities and our sensitiveness to certain scenarios and scenes. And at the end of the day, he made us feel safe to take, to go anywhere. And I don't think that Hugh planned any moments. I mean, there's one scene where Hugh is, um, we're, we're beating Paul Dano. Mm -hmm. And I mean, they should have said cut a minute ago or two minutes ago and I'm standing there on my haunches and Hugh is leant over holding him with one hand and, and punching with the other hand and I'm ready to give up and, and he's like, no. And I mean, I literally collapse because my legs aren't as strong as this monster, this man's legs are and he will not stop. He will not stop and this, we went shooting for another two minutes and I mean, we were exhausted at the end of it. Yeah, I can imagine. That was one scene I talked about with, with Denis. I said, is, especially knowing that he was such a good person, such a nice man, for him to have done that scene. I, I, I wanted to know what happened after Denis said, cut. 
I mean, when they said cut, there was, everyone kind of went to their separate corners, but then we would all end up hugging mm. at the end of it, you know. At the end of that scene, I vomited um, because the blood that they were pouring in the guy's mouth and, you know, and it spilling on the floor and your, your gut is in these knots and you're it's stuck between tears and, you know, and, and joy that you feel like you've accomplished the scene, but you know that what you've just put on camera, on, on film, um, is a bit too real. Yeah. And you don't know how to walk away from it. So, I mean, we all became a bunch of women afterwards and was hugging in tissues and, <laughs> and here's a mint. <laughs> yeah. I can imagine. I'm sure there was a few beers on the side, some wine or something. <laughs> it was like, oh my God, Terrence, really uh, extraordinary. Like I say, just such a great film. Uh, how, did you, how did you guys keep the kids? I know they weren't in all the, you know, those horrible scenes, but just to keep the levity for them and to keep them, oh, you know? They did a great job by arranging it, ordering it, the, um, the, the, the AD, the first AD, my God, he, um, everybody was named D. He, um, the way that they set it up to where once the children were kidnapped, we didn't see them again. So you, we missed them. We spent two weeks shooting with them and playing with them, and a lot of those scenes in the house were improv, and we are just come out and scare and play, and you had a closeness to them. And my daughter, Joy, in the movie, she wrote a card to me, and she wrote Daddy on the card, and I never opened it. And I don't, they, it was in my trailer, and I carried it with me every day. And you just wait, because I want to read the card to my baby. Um, they actually felt like it was our children. And yeah, you're going to make Sorry. me tear. No, it's okay. <laughs> Very quickly, Terrence, you've had such an extraordinary career. You're so fantastic. I wanted to know from you, what was the role that changed your life forever? Um, crash, more than anything. And um, this film I did where I played uh, Nelson Mandela, mm. because you realize there's so many things that, choices that we make in our lives that we can do anything to, to satisfy our immediate needs, but to make a moral choice at any given point. In those 27 years while he was in prison, he could have gotten out just by denouncing the ANC, but he held on for the sake of, you know, his ch greater children of Africa. And playing this character, it, uh, you know, I, there are certain roles that you can't act. There are certain roles that you're kind of just thrust in and uh, it gets you, it just gets you.